I shake out politically. This isn't really about that. This is an examination of a phenomenon that's taking place all across the country right now. We have seen over the past several years with Donald Trump the lining up of evangelicals, you know, the zealot activists, the fundamental Christians, uh, the scam evangelists, as my friend Hemet Mehta likes to say. And they've anointed Donald Trump their savior figure, and they've rallied behind him. And in advance of this election, they have named and claimed Donald Trump's second term as kind of a divine foregone conclusion, right? This is God's guy. He's going to win. We name it. We claim it. Okay, so it's Ron Ether here. We're doing this for critique, educational purposes, and uh, also general knowledge. Thank you. obvious he will be at 290 which is an easy victory in the electoral college he will be the next president of the united states and these evangelicals are losing their minds the media said joe biden's president ha 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 oh kenny you have got a big mouth mate What a big mouth you've got. I can put a quacker in there, no trouble at all. That's a tough clip to watch in its entirety. If you made it through, I commend you. I found it difficult to watch because it's just so busy. I found it quite easy. A long history of posting bizarre stuff, preaching bizarre sermons, making bizarre statements. I think he counts among the scam evangelist, right? He's in that category. This is Paula White. We've talked a lot about her. She, of course, has a hall pass to the White House, which is weird in a state church separated government. Another millionaire scam evangelist who is on Donald Trump's evangelical advisory board and is, get this, Donald Trump's personal spiritual advisor. She has direct access Gives to the bad president. Advice for sure. The election is not going her way, so she held a sermon where she called down or called over angels from Africa. Strike and strike and strike. Well, they've got to come a long way, don't they? It's going to take a while. And strike and strike until you have victory. For every enemy that is aligned against you, let there be that we would strike the ground, for you will give us victory, God. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of shouting and singing. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. The Lord says it is done. The Lord well, there's an angel there done. already. The Lord says it is done. How many done. angels do you want? I hear victory, 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 victory in the quarters of heaven. In the quarters of heaven. Victory, 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 victory. Oh, another victory, one. Victory. For angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Amanda, Aka, Aka, Raka, Aka, Sanda, Aka, Ambo, Osa, Rite, Eka, Sanda, Aka, Oh, there's another one. For angels have even been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From right Africa for right Africa. Now. My favorite part of this clip is not Paula White. It's watching the guy who kept pacing behind her. Who is that guy? He's an angel. The guy with the open Bible and he's wearing shorts and he's not saying a word. He's just kind of walking back and forth and back and forth. What is his role? What is he doing back there? Is he somehow amplifying the message? Or is the Bible serving as a conduit? You know, the open pages are a conduit for God's power, or perhaps the power of the angels from Africa? I have questions about this. Well, everyone's of got course, questions. Because it's the internet. Took about 10 seconds before people started to post Paula White remixes. Yes, they certainly have. I'm one of them. This is a remix. Hope you're going to learn something out of this. Don't trust false prophets. Fishy that Kenny boy with a big mouth.
Okay, this is Michelle Bachman. She is a hardcore evangelical. I mean, just really a, a zealot, like a Christian wing nut. She served as a congresswoman. She actually ran for president back in 2012. She ran for the presidency eight years ago. And again, she served representing Minnesota's sixth district for eight years, okay, in Congress. She saw that things were not going Donald Trump's way. She had a little freak out. She went on Twitter and she called down the power of God's iron rod. Wow. Can I ask if you would smash the clay jar of deceit in America? Smash. The clay jar of delusion Smash all the in the unbelief. United States of America. All the atheists. Smash the delusion, Father. All the unbelievers. Joe Biden is our president. He is not. Yeah. Would you take your iron rod and smash, smash the all these atheists that Nancy Pelosi does have her House of Representatives? We don't know that. Smash it in Jesus' name. Smash unbelief. Smash, Lord, the takeover of the U.S. Senate by Chuck Schumer. Lord, smash it with your iron rod. You know, I can't help but wonder why Michelle Bachman has such a fixation on God's iron rod. That's a whole other conversation. A couple more examples, and I do have a point. This guy's name is uh, Ken Redmond. He is pastor of Abundant Life Worship Center in Midland, Texas. He just said this. You believers that voted against the righteousness of God, a day of reckoning is coming. That's for sure, for unbelievers. You covenant with death. You must be born again, mate. You not only said that, I do not condemn the babies that have been aborted. I do not condemn the babies that will be aborted. You're not saying that, surely. You've made your covenant with death. Woe unto thee, all who have made a covenant. Oh, you wouldn't want to death. do that. Of course, this is common thinking in the church. I think it explains oh, part of not that common. how and why many devout Bible believers rationalize a vote for Donald Trump, a guy who is the antithesis well, of the for best him. teachings of Jesus Christ. We often wonder how this happens. How do you embrace the best teachings of Jesus and support a guy who is the antithesis of that, right? Jesus, he certainly in his is. best form, is talking about charity and love and don't be vengeful and love your enemies That's and right. care for people and just don't be an awful person. You seem to okay. know all about it, mate, even though you're an atheist. The abortion atheist. question becomes overarching. It is all-encompassing. And those just get who bored again, for that's a woman's all. right to choose, they have indeed made a covenant with death. Here's a pastor who thinks that anybody who voted for Biden has actually called down a generational curse Oh, on themselves, no, their not children, one of them. Grandchildren, etc. You don't want any of them, You have a list of pastors out oh, there. Oh, no, not this guy. That was made headlines. That was supporting Biden. They were pro-life pastors. We disagree on the pro-life or the pro-choice thing, but we're supporting Biden. Are you kidding me? You kidding Let me? Let me tell you something. Every Christian, every pastor out there that voted for Joe Biden last night... You have bought a curse upon yourself and your family, your children, and your children's children down to the third and fourth generation, and you need to repent. I don't care if you are pro-life. You cannot call yourself a Christian. Yes, repent, man. And call yourself a, a Republican. Or Talking rubbish like that, man. You know what I mean? Or repent. A Democrat, I mean. or, well, whatever it is. You call yourself a Democrat and a Christian, it doesn't matter. If you voted for the dark side, that's what you did. You are implementing the dark agenda, Satan's agenda. Well, you don't want the dark agenda. The kingdom of darkness. You are not supporting the kingdom of God. And if you cannot see that, you have. if you do not repent, judgment will fall upon you, I believe, and your family and your children's children down the third well, and fourth generation. Too. That's a guy named Mark Taylor. He's a Christian zealot and right-wing nut who's always speaking in terms of the apocalypse. And he drew that generational curse reference right out of the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. Oh, you know your Bible for an atheist. The being visited upon the I think sons. you've been reading Here it. Here is a lovely Seth. couple. This is a husband and wife Seth. You know your Bible. duo. They are associated directly Just get with side, the that's Copeland all. Ministries. Their names are George and Terry Pearsons. They are pastors of Eagle Mountain International Ministries. They heard about the vote not going their way, and they took to the stage as well. That will be done! Wow. That will be done! I think 
doesn't look like a bit of excitement. In the United States, in the name of Jesus, every city. And Lord, we don't just look to the presidency, but we're asking you to straighten out every Senate race. Straighten Repeat out every everybody in America, race. especially all you atheists and believers. Straighten out every state legislature. Straighten out every mayor election. Straighten out every city council. Straighten them out. Straighten them out. Straighten them out. Expose it all. Don't overdo it, love. Expose it all, Lord. Pray for the sinners. Lord, if it be your will and if it be necessary, another election, another voting. No, election, that won't happen. it takes under your kingdom, oh God. Don't okay, talk one rubbish. more real fast. Let me share with you a clip from a real-life prophet. This guy hears the voice of God and then gives prophecy from God to the country, to the world, to the ages. We all make mistakes, don't we? He is from Bethel Church in California. You born again, he are you, Seth? He prophesied that Donald Trump would win the election. He would win a second term. It is guaranteed. I actually made a note of his uh, quote. He said, the Lord wants it. So this was the prophecy. Well, of course, that prophecy did not come true. And this prophet of God went online to apologize. I really want to apologize sincerely apologize for missing the prophecy about Donald Trump. Uh, I prophesied um, that Donald Trump would be president four days well, after You're not the he, only one that made uh, a mistake, are you? Four days after he uh, took the no nomination. Just check the Sid uh, Roth show. Time, uh, four days after he declared himself well, the false a candidate, prophets on there. The first time. And, uh, At least you apologize, I, the others that don't. That's obviously right. And then later on, I prophesied that he would um, not be impeached. That's all right, fact, mate. The Lord will bless you. Term. You can and always I was completely ask wrong. for repentance. I take full responsibility for being wrong. There's no excuse for it. I, I think it, um, it doesn't make me a false prophet, but it does actually create a credibility gap. I would encourage members of Bethel Church and all of his viewers and listeners around the world to perhaps take a step backward and ask yourself how someone who is divinely appointed receiving God's perfect instruction can make such a major, M-A-J-O-R, major mistake. Now here's the point I'm trying to make. The people who are losing their minds about the way the election is going because their man, their chosen one, is obviously not going to win the second term. They are betraying that their God was not able to pull off the big win. God is without limit. God is omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful. There's well, nothing he you does know not your Bible. cannot do. Just get God born again, Seth. God, and yet God was not able to pull you off not the Trump victory for his second term. This immediately calls into question the omnipotence of God, because if he willed it, if he wanted it, if he had destined it, it would have come to pass. So if it doesn't come to pass, can God really do anything and everything? And here's the more important, God can do anything. And I think more interesting scenario. If their claim with Donald Trump is that God sometimes uses flawed people, even awful people, to carry out his will, kind of a King Cyrus argument. Well, and Biden wins you know the election your Bible, by King 5 Cyrus. million popular votes and 290 electoral votes are in the can. So it's decisive, okay? At that point, does the narrative switch to embrace the notion that God is using Joe Biden? God's destiny was this other candidate for this other time, such a time as this. And God is going to use that flaw God can use anybody. to carry out his divine as long yes. as you're willing. Right? If God's will is to be done, God's will will always be it done. It will always be done. perfect master plan. If this is part of the plan, I would think the evangelicals would be lining up lockstep despite any disagreements they might have with his philosophy, person, or policies. As they did with Donald Trump, right? They took all the bad and they brushed it off the table and decided to ignore it. If God has appointed Joe Biden, they have to take all the stuff they don't like, brush it off the table, and ignore it. Because this That's is good God's advice. Very good advice there, you plan. Christians. You... Now, regardless of what happens next, these evangelicals have egg all over their faces. 
They no, some of them and have. They and prophesied oh, and oh. demanded and called down the power of the Almighty, and things did not go their way. In the case of many of them, they sort of got in bed with someone who is the antithesis of what they would preach about in Sunday sermon, right? Godly values, morality, honesty, honor, loyalty, truth, fidelity, etc. Right now they're in bed with someone who is the antithesis of all those teachings and they have to find a way to extricate or excuse or figure out how to move forward. Some people I think are going to continue to pound the drum of doom and gloom and prophecy and curses and the dark days ahead because we have strayed from their particular God. And I think other people are going to try to adapt to survive and they're going to rationalize their way through or navigate their way through just to retain power. It'll be interesting to see which of these people remain loyal and allegiant to this weird apocalypse narrative and which ones become the rats that are scrambling to try to escape the sinking ship. Regardless, I think this is a useful case study in delusion and corruption. And as these people continue their slide into oblivion, they will remain very interesting to watch. There's always make a comeback there, Seth Andrews. There's hope yet for the American evangelists. Praise the Lord, get born again. Watch my channel. You can get born again now on my channels. It's Ron Ether. Just type it in and get born again.